This problem states that a 10 kilogram block is supported by two cables AB and AC as shown in the figure below. The distance BO is three meters. The distance OC is five meters and the distance AO is one meter. Determine the tension in each cable. So I don't have O there, but O is vertical from A onto that bar. So BO um, and then OC. As you can see, the the, um, <clears throat> the distances uh, could have told you that, but I just wanted to point that out. All right, so let's go ahead and lay out our general framework. Once again, draw a free body diagram. Step two, write out all those equations and solve. And uh, of course, step number three, we're just going to mute that for now until later, uh, some uh, future cram session, and uh, we'll just move on from there. So our first step is, again, draw our free body diagram. This is our system that we are interested in, of which we will simplify it as we make our way through the problem uh, to the final free body diagram that we will actually analyze. So let's go ahead and define the four-step process once again. I always want to reiterate on this because it's super important just to remember. Simple process. Sketch the complete object. Draw all the external support reactions. Actually, just draw all the forces. Identify each of those forces with the proper magnitude and direction. Label all those unknowns how you feel comfortable, whether with a letter or something that's unique and then add all the relevant dimensions needed to analyze. Now again, remember that our object of interest is are the cables that are connected at point B and C and are supporting the mass hung at point A. So we can simply draw out the shape as it is depicted in the original formula. And this is our starting point. This is our starting point for our free body diagram and the object in which we want to confirm equilibrium for and solve for the unknown support reactions. Now our next step is to identify all the external support reactions, the springs, the cables that are attached to our object and also any complex supports or self-weight. We don't have self-weight complex supports in this, but we do have cables. Now. What we want to actually do is simplify this down a little bit more and we want to isolate point A. We want to isolate point A and pull that out of the actual diagram to start creating a new free body diagram through just that single particle. Now, identifying the forces, we are going to have a tension in the cable AB. We're going to have a tension in the cable AC as well as we have a mass acting downward from point A, as I illustrated there. So these are all the forces acting in this problem. There really isn't much at this point again that we can do with this as it sits right now. So we have to move through our four step process to make sure that we have everything that we need. And step three is to identify each force with the proper magnitude and direction. We want to label all those unknowns once again with unique nomenclature. Now I've already identified the two tensions as well as the force acting downward at point A and so this step naturally played itself out already and a lot of times people just combine step two and three. I do personally but I want to make sure that um, you know I formulate something that people can follow as a checklist come exam day if needed. Now we have enough information given to us to determine the magnitude of the force that's created by the block, but for now I'm going to just keep it identified as M so we can move our way through the development of this free body diagram. And when we go to solve, I will actually pull that data at that point. Now that all of our force is identified, we, we can now begin adding in all the pertinent dimensional data that, that the problem actually gives to us. This is going to help us and actually is needed to solve for any reactions, support reactions, tensions, etc. So once again, we're just going to simply bring over all the, all the dimensions that we are given. We're not going to filter any of them. There's no need to do that. Um, 
Um, again, we don't want to spend time going back to the problem statement if we don't want, if we don't have to. That's just a waste of time, and especially when we're under timed conditions, it's uh, really going to uh, hurt us in the long run. But there are going to be two pieces of data that aren't identified in this original drawing, and that's the angles theta 1 and theta 2 which we will use to define the x and y components when we go to solve for our equations of equilibrium. So we need theta 1, theta 2. It's not given to us. However, we know uh, that we're going to need them. So there we go. That's our fully developed free body diagram based on the information and the illustration uh, we are given in this problem statement. So now that our free body diagram is complete, we can go ahead and move on to step two of our process where we will write out our equations of equilibrium and determine any unknown support reaction forces, which we know um, this problem is actually asking for tension. So recall that we have three equations of equilibrium. We have the components, sum of the components in the x direction equaling to zero. We got the sum of the components in the y direction equaling to zero as well as the sum of the moments equal to zero. Now remember that the first two, this could be just a simple practice, this could be a simple word problem on the exam. And that's why I pull these little nuggets out when I'm studying and when I'm creating these presentations because um, you know, most people aren't going to mention this, most resources aren't, just because it's a, it's a simple basic uh, you know, point. But it's important because many of these, again, can be simple word problems. These first two equa equations confirm and verify that we have translational equilibrium. Object is not moving right, left, up and down, it's not moving. It's in equilibrium. While our third equation is our rotational equilibrium. If it sums to zero, there is no rotation of that object. All combined, all three of those summing to zero, our object is in complete static equilibrium. So let's go ahead and jump in to the problem. Now we will use the traditional y, x, y axis for this particular problem, making it for the most part fairly straightforward except for our cables are at some angle that we need to determine. So before we begin writing out our equations, let's go ahead and determine what angles theta one and theta two actually are. Now to do that, we're gonna refer back to our trigonomic trigonometric identities and use the appropriate one to determine each of the angles. Now in both of these cases we have the opposite and the adjacent side so the tangent will be the appropriate function to use. Now in an effort to conserve time I'm going to skip walking through the calculations that we as we have already had a full cram session on trig identities. Um, that, that covered this topic in depth. But when we do put in all of our information, we get an angle of theta one is equal to 71.6. We get an angle at theta two, 78.6. Now taking these values, I'm just gonna jam them up there in our free body diagram. As you see the green and blue angles, they are now there. All right, so let's go ahead and get started uh, with our equations of equilibrium. And again, I'm going to start with our translational equations, gathering all the force components that run along the x-axis as, uh, um, as of this uh, of this diagram. I'm going to get an equation equal to negative t a b t sub a b sine theta one plus t a c sine theta two. Now when I do the same for all of our y components, these are all the components running along our y axis, I gather them up and I get an equation t sub ab cosine theta 1 plus t sub ac cosine theta 2 minus mg. So again there's that g, we're given mass, we always got to remember gravitation. All right, so next, let's go ahead and formulate our rotational equation. Or can we? 
As you can see, all of our component forces are running through the same point at A. Now taking this point in isolation as we are, we have created a concurrent force system because all points have a line of action about the same point. No moments are experienced, which means we are left with just the two translational equations. So remember that, I'm gonna repeat that once again. If we're given a force system, which uh, if you just look at our free body diagram, the dark forces running through that single point, that's called a concurrent force system. Again, that could be a simple question on the exam. Concurrent force system, all forces run through the same line of action, point of action. No moments are experienced, so there is no rotation. All right, so with all of our equations defined, and again, in this case, we are only given two. We only have two. Do we have everything we need to solve? Can we even solve is the question. And the answer is we can. We have two equations, and if you look at those two equations, we have only two unknowns. We have T, t sub a, a, B, T sub A, C. So we can. Two equations, two unknowns. We all know that. We have to have the same number of equations that we have unknown. But in this case, we just have to get a little bit more creative because both of our equations do have two unknowns. So what we're actually going to do is a little bit of substitution. So what I wanna do is take our first equation and I wanna isolate T sub AC. So I get a, um, I get a new formula, a new equation or a new, new representation of what a T sub AC is equivalent to. And then what I can do from there is actually take that and plug it into our second equation. As you see, I'm going to get a new equation. Mg is equal to T sub AB cosine theta 1 plus um, that beautiful looking second part to that equation. But I did take the Mg to the left side. I didn't really uh, illustrate that, but I just kind of rearranged that a little bit. So now that we have this uh, new equation, we only have one unknown because we know the mass, we know gravity, and so what we can actually do is rearrange. We can isolate T sub A B. We can plug in all of our information, all the known data that we know, and we're going to get the answer 193.5 so the tension in cable AB is 193.5 newtons all right so now that we have T sub AB all we have to do is actually go up to our, our um, isolated T sub AC equation that we created we know theta 1 we know theta 2 we just plug those numbers in and we get that the tension in AC is 187.3 187.3 and those are our answers tension in cable AB is 193.5 tension in cable AC is 187.3